The military drum, umbrella, and dressing are irreplaceable tools, never absent from a survivor's inventory. The saw, while a weak melee weapon, is vital in creating your mass storage system. And of course, no one could imagine a world where specialized items such as the carjack would not exist. Among the hundreds of items in Unturned Vanilla, there are those that stand out as staple due to the vital purpose that they fulfill. However, Unturned is no stranger to less essential types of gear. Items so utterly irrelevant, in fact, that most players never even bother to look at. Today we mourn these fallen soldiers, items forgotten by time or implemented as mere gimmicks which either do not enhance gameplay in any way or are so offensively redundant to the survival game mode, they might as well be removed and make no difference. Join me as I go over the top 10 most useless items in Unturned. Here are just a few quick rules. My condolences to the Elver Pizza. Take a look at the countless pieces of unturned fan art out there and you may notice a common theme among many of them. The main hero standing victorious, wearing a ghillie suit. Controversial, but I believe one of the biggest icons of unturned may just be a useless pile of grass. The idea of blending into the environment for those stealthy kills is not uncommon within survival games and shooters, but by actively using this clothing set in unturned you cripple yourself in multiple ways. No inventory slots, worse armor than any military set, and there I say, an actual military set and green balaclava might do its camouflaging job just as well, without any of the downsides. Most players have their grass turned off anyways, and a ghillie user is probably gonna need some NVGs and analysis pack to be effective, so they're gonna be seen more easily. Nowhere is this more apparent than on Germany, where the difference between the ghillie color and the ground is ridiculous. There is some good news though, ever since Washington, ghillie items are no longer mega zombie drops, so Nelson has clearly abandoned the idea of them being the holy grail of clothing. Also, any one of the clothing pieces can be crafted into four ghillie netting, which is somewhat useful. So while I despise the ghillie, the tenth spot is as low as it's gonna go. Civilian night vision is a joke. I will not deny that the goggles themselves look cool, but take a look at this footage. Perhaps it doesn't seem that bad, but this is not actually what civilian night vision looks like. I have simply grayscaled the image. This is the visual experience offered by the goggles in question, and it is shamefully bad. Created as a midpoint between a flashlight and military NVGs, I almost never pick them up if I find them unless I play on Yukon, and even there the reason is I don't have any other choice. Often I'd rather use a torch to navigate dark places, even at the cost of making myself more visible. If military night vision is annoying but necessary during nighttime encounters, the civilian NVGs are annoying, and that's it. As much slack as the nail gun may receive, it is often overlooked what an incredible advantage an internally suppressed secondary with an easily refillable clip can offer to a freshly spawned player, even if briefly. The luxury of silently taking out a burner or a spitter this early on is unmatched by conventional civilian weapons. That is why the number 8 spot is reserved for its ugly cousin, the paintball gun. Meant to serve more or less the same role as the nail gun, it fails miserably. The paintball hopper is unrefillable and doesn't even come attached as stock. This makes sense in the context of the arena map it was created for, but on any actual map it only manages to throw off anyone stumbling upon it. The size of the gun in your inventory is two slots larger than the nail gun, and the damage is still lower, albeit for a larger cliff size. The paintball gun really is bottom of the barrel, but what saves it from being any lower is the one piece of metal you receive upon scrapping it. Number 7 on the list was originally a long and boring segment about the military fragmentation and tracer magazines, which I have instead decided to boil down into a simple question. When was the last time you used any one of these instead of stock grade military rounds? Unfortunately, we don't have all night, so let's move on. 
The suppressor has long fallen from grace. As a barrel attachment, it has always been the last choice in the roster, but what made it truly hopeless was the addition of durability. 300% degrade chance for 70% noise reduction, but a 10% bullet drop increase has a trade-off. More often than not, you will only be able to fire a few rounds on normal mode before requiring expensive repair. Compare this to the military or ranger barrels, which increase accuracy at no durability cost, or the muzzles, which not only hide bullet traces and flashes, but also reduce bullet drop and recoil, even past 0% durability. So, the suppressor is a chore to use, and save for the muffler, the worst barrel attachment. But no other item could serve its purpose. Being quiet is important. Thus, the number 6 entry is actually the precision charge. And I have exactly one second left to talk about it. The flashbang is the definition of heavily situational. So situational, in fact, that it is almost never worth using. Hello, it is me yet again. My apologies, but for those of you who think this is Counter-Strike Global Offensive, you might want to pay attention. Imagine that mannequin over there is a sniper. You could try to be smart and give him a good blinding, but I invite you to observe the effective range of the flashbang grenade. And even if you were to find a perfect opportunity to use it, the functionality of this item is riddled with inconsistencies that Holt Baker thoroughly presented in his video long ago. But perhaps I can still make a case for the flashbang. Or perhaps I could show you this footage of me dodging the flash using third person instead. Not many people bother with distracting zombies rather than confronting them early on. But while I'd understand a flare for its basic concept, the smoke grenade boggles the mind, especially its use in multiplayer. Maybe you could get away with black smoke, fooling your foes into thinking a vehicle blew up, but in any other scenario, all you do is create a giant glittery arrow pointing at your location. Thus, for purposes like initiating a surprise attack on your enemies, the fact that you have to first create a large cloud of smoke which takes a few seconds to fully form defies its own purpose. Elver took some steps towards fixing this, actually, by making the fume opaque, introducing grass color smoke, instantaneous detonation, and a gigantic comedically named Big Smoke, which don't make it useful, but at least make it situational. Back to vanilla, however, it is true that the smoke grenade is an object of its time, therefore its simplicity, and why I don't entirely expect Nelson to return to this item. But perhaps a rehaul could be in order. Maybe the smoke may create some sort of area debuff which could be diminished by a gas mask or bio hood, rewarding those who wear their precious protective gear outside of dead zone trips. Really, porting over what Elver did could be enough. I've taken my time with this entry because I am fascinated by it. Maybe I just don't use it enough to find a use for it, but neither does anybody else, so likely for good reason. <coughs> the addition of brick structures surprised me at the time. Brick building should have caused a shift in a meta which hadn't changed for as long as time. Instead, they were sat quietly on the shelf of pointless features. Brick was exceedingly rarer than wood and metal, and the difference in health did not justify the effort at all, situated just between the two. The stats seemed fine in theory, but not considering how tough bricks are to obtain by looting construction locations, whereas metal and wood could be easily harvested. For how tedious they were to craft, they were only an optional middle step, which didn't help. Neither did the fact that a base must reach maximum defenses as fast as possible, otherwise, it's easy prey. Has any of this been tweaked since then? The answer is no. The only time I have seen brick structures used was for rather aesthetic purposes. And that's it. If somehow you've ran out of wood but have three bricks to spare, make a wall. Or don't, since the rest of your base will still be wood and raiders can just go around it. So even better then, get right back to chopping. Here's a rather unusual thought exercise. Picture having your entire existence nullified by five logs. If you happen to be an unturned item called the heat stim, you might not have to imagine that. Within unturned, warmth is a status effect which doesn't heal you per se, but it prevents a player from freezing during a blizzard, so they may regen health afterwards. The heat stim provides this warmth for eight seconds, while simply standing by a campfire or taking shelter in a base, vehicle or any sort of wind cover behaves the same, but indefinitely. The heat stim was meant for a lost world, where snowfall on Yukon used to be never ending, and the cold utterly unforgiving. Today, how one could be stranded of shelter enough on a medium map to require immediate medical attention is beyond me. 
Yet should they, any healing item such as a dressing will do just fine. Leagues better than any short-term warmth the heat stim may provide. No more than a pocket campfire and a bit of experience invested in the right skill points are enough to survive comfortably in the snow-covered wastelands, if I may even call them that. It would not surprise me if many of those watching this video have never heard of this item. Now presenting the honorable contenders. Items redundant enough in their own right, but not redundant enough to make the list. The Hell's Fury and Nykarev post-rating update. Explosive arrows. Leather clothing. The walkie-talkie, earpiece and cuff items on single player. Yes, they can spawn there. Flares. Morphine. And finally, the classic bandana with an armor value of zero. At the very bottom of the list is the Adrenaline, an item which fully restores your stamina is questionable given how the game's survival stats function, but a 5% radiation penalty is quite terrible. It is essentially the only item in the game with the sole purpose of harming you. If Antrin's energy mechanics were more refined, I could see this being a really viable last resort item. I'd even say the same for the heat stim. But unfortunately, once you've put one point into your exercise skill, this is the one item that you will never think twice about leaving on the ground. Should I then perhaps forgive the adrenaline for being somewhat viable in the very specific context of Arena? And more specifically, Monolith? No. If one adrenaline syringe were scrappable into one chemical bottle, it would be a pleasure finding one while looting medical locations. But as it stands, it remains a mere relic and a funny kill that Crazy Seat got in a video from five years ago. It's been a while.